Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Yeah, the old clock says it's five o'clock. Beer 30. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer is Coop Ale Works F5 IPA. Everybody knows what an F5 is. That's the most powerful tornado there is. And, and these guys are out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, so they do get some F5s out that way. This beer was sent to me by Shane. Shane, thanks a bunch for sending some of these beers that I cannot get here in Virginia. Uh, I have such a great people that send me uh, wonderful beers uh, from all parts of the USA and other parts of the world. I've got beers from other countries, so very expensive to ship beers uh, from other countries here, but I have got them. So uh, I appreciate all the subscribers that send me these wonderful beers. Shane, thanks again, my friend, uh, my brother in beer, uh, uh, for sending the package that you did, and uh, just I feel so blessed to uh, to get some of these beers that people are willing to spend the hard-earned money on them, pay to ship it to me. Yo, guys are awesome. Freaking awesome. All right, let's get on with this one. Uh, all you know, all you guys know I'm a hoppy and I love these hoppy beers. Uh, so uh, this is a uh, uh, IPA, like I said, 6.8%. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it's got on the bottom of the can here. It says 100 IBUs, 100 plus IBUs. So this is going to be a bitter one. If you're trying to get into IPAs and not have one, this would probably not be your first choice in my opinion. Uh, you'd probably want to start out because this is going to be a little on the bitter side if you've never had one before. Uh, and they do date it. This one is uh, 0208 So February 8th, March, April, May, June. So we're at four months. It's a tad past its prime in my opinion. So hopefully it's retained a little bit. And I'm sure this was the freshest one that Shane could get his hands on. But in my opinion, I use the three month rule on IPAs. It's better to have them the first month if you can get them. Then the second month, the hops fade off just a little bit. In the third month, they fade off a little more. But once you get past the 90 days, they really start dropping off pretty quick. So, And I just got this uh, uh, about a week ago, so I knew I was going to review it pretty quick. So I wanted to get to it before it got any older. But uh, Shane, I do appreciate it, sir. So let's get on with this one. It says here, commercial description, that straightforward malt body supports a distinctive bouquet of Columbus and Falconer's Flight hops that impart citrus, grapefruit, and pine note characteristics of the West Coast style. F5 is a belligerent hop reckoning. Food pairings for this beer is going to be your typical IPAs. Cuisine is curry and Thai. Cheeses are peppery, Monterey pepper, jack, sharp, blue cheddar. Your more stronger cheeses, even gorgonzola, Limburger. And the meat is poultry fish and selfish salmon. Uh, I'll add grilled meat to that because everything off the grill, in my opinion, goes well with a nice pale ale or an IPA. Uh, glass right of pint back in Nonic Tumbler Mug Style Sidel. I like using my favorite glass for these styles of beer, the solid beer glass. And not recommended for extended selling. That's the reason I tell you guys that. Uh, the hops have, and I'm sure being four months old, the hops have faded on this one. I don't say substantially, but it's past its 90 day prime, so and, uh, uh, I got a feeling, I'm hoping it's still going to be good. So It's a 16 ounce can on top of that too, so hopefully it's retained a little of it, so let's get it into the glass, and like I said, it's a 16 ouncer, I'm not going to pour it all in there at one time. I'm going to leave a little bit of room to get my big old fat nose down in there. F5. About a finger of head. Pretty big bubbles on the outside of the glass here. Big uh, uh, 
uh, soapy bubbles, I call them, and it's a little creamier on top with some bigger bubbles in there from that, from that pour. Very clear beer, nice uh, golden color. It's a deep golden color to the amber state, not a light micro lager golden. Good looking beer, a lot of bubbles streaming up from the center of the glass. This glass has an etching in the bottom of it there that helps release these bubbles. A lot of your, uh, a lot of your beer glasses will have that etching in the bottom uh, to increase the, uh, the bubbles, the carbonation. So uh, let's get a nose on it. I'm still getting the hops. It's, it's still, I'm sure it's not like it was the first couple of weeks, month or so that it was in the can, but still getting a good representation. I've been getting pine and grapefruit, a little bit of oranges and tangerines, a little bit of pineapple. Smells pretty good. Smells very good. 100, I, 100 plus IBUs, that's a lot of your double IPAs. We'll get to that. But not not a lot, in my opinion, of the single IPAs will have that much IBUs. But this one says it does, so we must have used a ton of hops in this one. Well, let's give it a taste and see what we got. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Shane. Thank you. Very nice. Definitely got the bitterness on the back end, guys. I will tell you straight up, 100 plus IBUs is not for the faint of heart. Not your entry level IPA by any means. Wow, that is very tasty. I would just imagine what how great this beer is when it's three or four weeks old, or even less. But it does have a strong bitterness. I will tell you that straight up, 100 plus IBUs, it does have a big bitterness on the back end. Just at this stage of the hot presence in it, it's a little overpowering in as far as the bitterness. Uh, when it's fresh, it's probably a great match. Uh, but as the hops have faded, uh, the bittering, the bitterness lingers on. Uh, so uh, still very decent. Still a very tasty beer. Still got a pretty good aroma for four month old beer. Still got a nice hot presence. Like I said, I can just imagine what this smelled like three, four weeks into the can. I mean, you probably could have smelled it from here when you popped the top. So, pretty decent representation. Let's try out the fridge, 40 degrees. Let me, uh, let me see, let me go ahead and pour the rest of this in there. I see if it clouds it up. Looks a little cloudier, that last little head on the bottom of it, and it is. Now, that's what I'm saying, guys. When you get these bigger cans, 16 ounce, and and the bombers and the 500 milliliter. Now you remember how clear that was. It is not clear at all now. So that last lit or bit that was in the can, that last swallow, if you will, poured into the glass, really clouded it up. So a lot of hot particles that have settled down, and and to me it looked like a filtered beer when I poured it and, and left that in the can. Now it does not look like a filtered beer. It looks like an unfiltered beer. So one more hit before I go since it clouded up. I should probably change the pace a little bit. Probably got a little more chunkiness in there. A little more taste, a little more flavor. Definitely getting more grapefruit and tangerines and pineapple now than I was on my original sip or two. So uh, just be aware when you're drinking these bigger cans, bigger bottles, a lot of the flavor is still down in there if you don't pour it all into a glass at one time. Or if you're, if you're pouring two glasses uh, and one's clear and you get to the bottom and the other's cloudy, you might want to do a little bartender thing and, and, and mix them up a little bit so you're equal in it out. Because I have that happen quite often that I've learned. I'll pour my glass and then if it's a 16 ounce can or something bigger, I'll pour her glass and it looks completely different than what my glass does. So. You'll lose a little bit of that flavor if you don't get to what's in the bottom of the can or the bottom of the bottle sometimes. So I try to remember that now when I have these beer cans and, and try to pour it on camera so you can see what it looks like and what it does to the beer when it is all that stuff in the bottom of it. So, change it drastically. It doesn't look clear anymore. 
Well, let me take it back and let her have a sip two or three before I sit here and talk about my gums and drink it all right in front of me. I'll be right back. Hey right, guys, I'm back. Let's step on this a little while. Very tasty. I mean, very nice pine, citrusy, grapefruit aroma. A little bit of tangerine oranges in there. Maybe a hint of some mango. But it's got a very strong bitterness to go along with it. And adding that last little bit to the can did help the taste. I do think this is an A beer, guys. I really do. I don't think it's outstanding. Uh, if I had a fresher can, I might change my mind. But this one being a little tad over four months old, I'm just being straight up honest with you. It's no reflection on Shane or any of the other guys that send me beers. Uh, I know y'all don't make the beers, and you buy the freshest thing you can get your hands on. So that's the way it is. I have the same problem buying beers here locally, but I, especially my go-to beers. You go in, and uh, I told this on the earlier review, you go in to buy some Bales Too Hard at Ale, and the last two times I've been in there, on the back of Bales Bottles, it has a little white code where they print their date, the bottle on date. It has absolutely nothing printed there. What's up with that? What's up with that, Bales? Uh, was the guy running the dating machine off in the bathroom, or is he out sick, and nobody else knows how to operate it? Uh, I refused to buy it the last time I was there. Didn't have a date on it, so I let it sit. I'm not going to buy it. Don't have a date on it. Uh, I just swing by Martin's and, and picked up some of the go-to and the uh, Enjoy by series. Uh, and uh, they had some bells there in, in the bottles. Their bottles did not have a date on it, but they had some 12-ounce cans that did. 16-ounce uh, cans that did have a, a date on it. So I bought a full pack of those instead. Uh, bells, you don't have a date, I'm not going to buy it. The way it is. Step up to the plate. Y'all been doing a good job up till now. I don't know what happened. So, but we're talking about this beer now. Let's do the final chug here. Delicious beer. Heavy bitterness, I will say that, for a single IPA. 6.8%, uh, close to the 7%. But usually you don't get to the 100 plus IBUs until you get to the double IPAs. Very tasty. I don't think it's, with what I'm reviewing now, I'm being straight up honest with you, it may, if I had one that was two weeks, three weeks, four weeks old, I may change my mind. But it's what I have in front of me right here, very tasty. It is an A beer, but it's not a 10. I'm going to give this an 8, which is A, a minus. I do think it's an A beer. It's very tasty. A lot of stuff going on in that beer. Uh, but it does have a very strong bitterness, which I think is a little overpowering uh, with the hot profile that has probably faded a little bit. Just my guess. It's my opinion. So, uh, yeah, if I was paying a numeric rating on this guy, it would probably be a 90 or a 91 with what I have in my hands right now, being the age of the beer. So, uh, but it is what it is. That's the way it is in the beer world. Uh, you, you pick up the freshest thing you can get your hands on usually. So, but I'm sure that's what Shane did here. And I do appreciate it, Shane. Thanks for sending it to me. I love trying the new beers, and I, I'm just got to be straight up honest with you guys. When I get fresh stuff, I give you my opinion. And when I get stuff that's uh, three, four, five, six months old, uh, especially in this style, I give you my honest opinion. Probably not fair to them, but if this is the freshest thing he could get his hands on, being four months old, somebody's not doing their job in the beer store. When these beers get right at three months old, they need to be marked down and, and, and moved out to settle it and something there. Uh, and, uh, and people like me that's never had them before get to try it and you go, mm, it's an eight beer, it's good, but is it outstanding? No, it's not. And there's so many people producing outstanding beers now. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, it is a tasty beer. I did enjoy it. Uh, I would probably buy this if I could get it here and I could get pressure cans. Uh, but I would Personally, I wouldn't go into a store and buy this if it had a four-month-old date on it being an IPA. That's just me. That's just me. Just told you a story about Bell. So, with that being said, let's go over to uh, Beer Advocate. They say 90 and outstanding. I agree with that. I agree with that. Usually, I don't agree with these guys. I agree with the uh, rate beer because uh, these guys are fairly conservative. But I agree with the score on this beer, on this particular one with what I have here. And over to rate beer, which leads me to think... This is a better beer than what I am getting right now because of the age of the beer. They say 96 overall and 95 in the style. So, this leads me to think that it's probably a tad better 
a little pressure. My bust, my problem. I just very appreciated that Shane spent his money on it and sent it to me to let me try. Uh, like I said, I would buy this beer if I could get it here and I could get it pressure. So, uh, with that being said, if you've had this from Coop Ale Works out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, let me know. Very tasty beer. It is. Sure, it's a lot tastier fresh. Uh, if you haven't, let me know, guys, and come on back tomorrow. We'll dig something out of the fridge. See you then.